Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, today I'm going to do a one year review of the T-Mobile 5G home internet. That's this gray cylinder up here. Mine looks a little different, has a fan on top, but um, I've had that for over a year. Uh, as far as the service as a whole, I will talk about what type of signal you need from T-Mobile as far as the cellular towers and bands. I'll talk about what kind of speeds you can expect uh, based on lots of different factors. I'll talk about positioning that router gateway uh, to get the best signal, some tricks that I've learned about it. I'll talk about the gateway itself, both the older one, which is the white ASCII 4G one, which I had in the past, and then this gray 5G Nokia fast mile one. And then I'll talk about um, you know things regarding that gateway as far as VPN, settings available on it, gaming, um, other features like that, including adding your own router, which I've done uh, after the fact there and what my experience has been doing that. I'll talk about the plan and the cost associated with this setup, as well as things like data and uh, if it's limited, how it all works and whatnot, how it's different than a hotspot plan. And then I'll talk about the future of T-Mobile and what they're going to do with their home internet and gateways and some other things that um, they're going to be rolling out here in the near future. So um, another thing I will touch on briefly in the middle of that is external antennas. So I don't have one, but I have installed them on here and I'll talk about why I don't have one, why it might work for you and whatnot. So I'll cover all that in this video. I'll put chapters in there so you can break it down and just watch the segments if you want, or you can watch the whole thing and really understand what I've learned over this past uh, year of, of use. And just to be clear, I am not sponsored by T-Mobile in any form or fashion. Uh, they don't pay me or give me anything for free. This is just my recollection. Lots of viewers uh, like this T-Mobile content, so I'm making it for you guys to watch. So obviously, subscribe to the channel if you find value in it. Note that I cover all kinds of topics on this channel uh, outside of T-Mobile Home Internet. Uh, do smart home, Wi-Fi, building things, Bobcat Toolcat, having fun out in the outdoors with zip lines and whatnot. So um, you can see lots of different content on there. But let's start with the T-Mobile signal and their cell system and how that is rolling out across the U.S. You know, they have been growing. The way that it works is basically there are auctions that the carriers have to buy certain uh, bandwidth or frequencies uh, spectrums out there and T-Mobile has been very aggressive in buying that up. Some of it was by merging with Sprint. They got a lot of this 2.5 gigahertz um, frequency from that merger and they've been really trying to take advantage of that especially in um, 2021 of growing that out. So there's been a lot of upgrades going on uh, of adding 5G especially this ultra capacity 5G and you'll see I have some other videos out there talking about uh, how you can find exactly what type of coverage you have at your house and how that will change your speed. So obviously you need to be somewhat close to a tower. You need to have uh, T-Mobile service there. And But what's important is that you look at what type of bands you have available. And then you can go to places like cellmapper.net uh, online and you can put in your address and you can find out what towers are around you for T-Mobile specifically and what bands are available um, that will help you understand that. Uh, you can also go to T-Mobile's coverage map and their coverage map is pretty good and by telling you if it's ultra capacity 5G or if it's extended range 5G or if it's just 4G, that will let you know uh, more or less which band um, you have available to you as well as what speeds you have. So talking about speeds now, obviously you get more speed if you have 5G. If you have 5G extended, that's a boost over 4G. And the way that works, just so you know, is you for this 5G that we're talking about, which is most of what you will have in the US with T-Mobile, it's non-standalone 5G, which means it needs a 4G LTE base signal in order to function and kind of get your, your IP address uh, from the network. And then the 5G right now is a carrier aggregation and it just simply adds capability to your download. So it will help your download, but it doesn't help your upload, which for most people uh, is fine. And as you'll see, you know, I'll talk about my speeds here briefly. 
Um, the upload is actually uh, typically very good, especially relative to even a cable or fiber, um, sorry, cable um, or DSL or anything other than fiber. Fiber is one of the few that are typically symmetric uh, for upload and download, and therefore you can have lots more upload. But for this non standalone, you um, just get a boost with the 5G if you're in extended range. It is a nominal boost. Um, if you are in the 5G Ultra, then that's really where you notice the difference in speed. You're talking about hundreds of megabytes per second of download. Um, you know, there's people reporting even close to a gig um, bit um, per second download. And uh, that's rare, but uh, certainly lots of people are in the hundreds of uh, megabits per second. So uh, upload is, for me, it's typically around 30. Um, 20s to, to mid 30s is, is my, kind of my best. And the real thing there is your mileage will vary. Now, for me, over my history, I've had a couple blips where my signal would get worse and drop off. I've had to restart my gateway a couple times. Not as bad. Some people report like daily or even weekly that they might have to do that. And um, it really kind of varies based off your location. Uh, but I found some tricks here, and that's why I'll talk about positioning this gateway and how sensitive it is. So obviously, you will get a different signal in different cities and different neighborhoods, but even within your house, uh, placing it on different rooms will have a big difference. And even where it's sitting at exactly, just rotating it will make a big difference. And a lot of people are surprised. They say, hey, I, I tried it. I went upstairs. I went downstairs and I can't get a good signal. It's only two bars on the little um, display on top. That means nothing. <laughs> like almost seriously uh, if you have any bars uh, that's enough for you to get um, your speed I typically have two bars on the top of my gateway but I can get uh, well over a hundred megabits per second and obviously that's not crazy fast but it's way faster than anything else I can get here so I have another video that goes into detail about how you get your um, gateway really honed in and get the best signal but long story short is basically you need to log in to the web interface, uh, which is 192.168.12.1. And you'll need to look at the cell tower metrics. And those metrics will tell you which bands you're on, as well as what your signal strength is. And most importantly is what your signal to noise ratio is. So that SNR is probably the most important value to get good. And that's where rotating or repositioning your raising your gateway up to the ceiling, putting it in front of windows, putting it behind walls. You really need to watch that value. And even though your signal strength might not change, which really the bars is an indicator of the, the signal strength, that is not as critical to your speed as the signal to noise. So that's where for me, if I rotate that guy 10 degrees, so right exactly where it's at and rotate it 10 degrees, I will see my uh, upload and uh, cut in half and my download might cut by a third so that's how sensitive it is and that's where you have to really play with it i was at my uncle's house uh, several weeks ago and he was complaining that his was band switching so it was going to different towers he had like i think three or four towers that it might click on to and he has one good tower the other ones are much slower and so the problem was for lo and behold, you know, his internet's not working or slow and it's because it switched on him. He didn't move it, the gateway or anything, but it just switched. So I went there and we were playing with it where he's on the computer looking at the metrics. I'm up there holding it in all these different positions. And we were able to find specific positions that if we pointed it just right, it would lock onto the tower that we wanted to. And then ultimately what we did to prevent it from switching to the other towers was an actual uh, piece of cardboard with aluminum foil on it and we put that on the side of the gateway that the unwanted tower is on so that aluminum foil blocking the signal uh, and it doesn't do a whole lot and you know it's not a drastic change in the signal strength for that tower but it's enough to keep it from auto switching so that's where i'll get into this gateway specifically um, the old white ascii 4g only gateway was actually uh, in the time that I had it for several months, it was actually reasonable as far as picking a good signal and sticking with it. 
what it really sucked at was Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi uh, power and um, coverage was really poor out of that gateway, but it gave you a bridge mode that allowed you to use your own um, router without a problem and um, that's the good thing about that uh, old one. Now this gray one, the main problem with it is that it has very, very limited settings. You cannot do any band locking. You can't, um, you know, turn off uh, DHCP, turn off NAT. There's no bridge mode. There's no adjustments to the firewall. You know, about all you can do is change the um, Wi-Fi SSID and the password. You can turn Wi-Fi um, off. You can change DHCP address um, blocks that it sends out. And that's really about it that you can do with it. You can't tell it to, um, you know, go to a certain uh, tower or band, and you certainly can't do any kind of custom configurations with port forwarding or that kind of stuff. So that's the downside to it. You can still add a router afterwards, which is what I have done. The problem with that is you're, you run something called double NAT and it's, it's kind of triple NAT because cellular is CG NAT. So that's almost like another layer of NAT that goes on there. But uh, some users will say, hey, you know, for gaming especially, you run into problems with that uh, dual layer of NAT that it doesn't make it happy and um, some things won't work. And that same is true for anything where you're trying to host. So if you're trying to host a server, uh, it's almost impossible to get in to it uh, from the outside without something like a VPN that you tunnel through. So that's about the only way that I know of that you can really access it um, from outside of your local area network is you need a VPN that supports port forwarding, which there aren't a whole lot of them and it will hurt your speed, but that is a way that you can effectively, what you're doing is tunneling through the gateway and you know if you have a router that that will host that that vpn for you um, that will allow you to get through that but that is the downside so the gateway has some upsides to it one is the wi-fi is wi-fi 6 and it's actually really really good as far as coverage and signal i've actually been really impressed with it although i typically keep it off because i have my own mesh system that i cover a much bigger area of so um, for most users, if it's just plug and play, this guy works fine. It has issues with quality of service. So as far as the router goes, it really stinks, to be honest with you. If you're just a, a, a regular user, just surfing the web and streaming some Netflix or whatnot, it's not a big deal. The um, other side to it is because it is cellular based, the IP address that where it comes out of the cellular network can change on you and if you're watching something that is re requires some kind of geo locking which I think Hulu Live does that I think some other um, services that uh, rely on you having a uh, local uh, address for like local channels for example that stuff will break and it won't work um, and like Hulu Live will not work uh, last I checked on this device so those are some drawbacks that you should know about it um, if you are a expert user of internet and do port forwarding that kind of stuff really this isn't the best product for you unless you want to get into to VPNs with port forwarding and all that kind of stuff as well so um, for the people that say that they have cable or fiber available to them they're going to try this to save money I would say in general that's kind of a poor idea and you might be disappointed because this will have some more limitations over those other uh, hardwired uh, ISPs. So talking about how else to modify the gateway to get better signal and get better speed, that would be this external antenna. So you can take apart this gateway, which I have a video where I go step by step of taking apart and adding these external antennas and testing them actually. And there, it's a four by four MIMO in there. So there's actually four antennas um, around this can and you can unplug two of them or you unplug four of them and you can put a two by two or you can put a four by four antenna setup for you. And that can help. For me, it really didn't make that big of a difference. What I found is 
this gateway is actually pretty good at um, picking up signal. It's well tuned, it's set up to really do well there. And so the place where the external antenna can really help you is if you can't place the gateway where you get good signal or you have something like metal siding, metal roof that's blocking signal, or if you have the high efficiency, um, low E windows that have the reflective nature that, that blocks some of the signal. So what I found is if you take your gateway and you can put it somewhere, including outside in your yard or on your roof, and you get drastically different speed than you do inside your house or where you want to place it, that's where an external antenna can really help you because you can put that external antenna at that place that you found has really good signal. So that's, in my opinion, the real benefit of those um, external antennas. Some people have claimed that, you know, they've, you know, tripled or 10x their speeds by adding the antenna. But again, like I said, when I did my testing, if I were to put the gateway in that exact same spot, I would get nearly the same speed. So um, that's something to note there. Now, talking about that though, um, we'll talk about the plan real fast and then we'll get into the future of what T-Mobile is doing with their um, home internet. So the plan, it started out as like a $50 with auto pay plan. It went up to $60 with auto pay for a while there. It's been back at that $50 uh, per month price uh, for a little bit. I'm sure it's going to go back up at some point. But the beauty of it, and really um, why a lot of people are stuck with it, is T Mobile is good with their pricing. They're very competitive and they lock in that price for you. So if you don't cancel, that, that um, plan will remain valid. You're grandfathered in um, pretty much indefinitely to that, that plan. So that's the great thing about it. And the other um, real benefit is that it's truly unlimited. There's unlimited data. People are out there using terabytes of data a month. I'm using typically closer close to a terabyte, you know, high high hundreds to a terabyte per month. And there is no slowdown based off that data usage. There is slowdown based off network traffic. And this is where some people get confused. It's it's not based off usage, it's based off congestion. So anytime you're on a network, different devices have different priority. And the uh, high dollar cell phone plans have the highest priority. And a lot of times if you read the fine print, like, you know, their base plan will give you 10 gigabytes of high priority data and then your low priority. And then like the Magenta Max will give you, I think unlimited data at the high priority type thing. So for this one, all of your data is low priority. And for me, that doesn't really matter. I get the same speed pretty much um, uh, 24-7 and uh, seven days a week. So it doesn't affect me much, but if I was in a busier area, uh, a lot of people will comment that, you know, their speeds, especially like at prime time in the evenings, um, you know, mid afternoon, that kind of stuff, it slows down their download significantly. And then in the middle of the night or like, you know, two, three, four AM, that's when their speeds are the fastest. So that is um, a true thing that happens to some users. So know that that, uh, that might happen to you. But uh, for me, it actually doesn't really matter. And that's where this product is really intended, um, at least from a concept standpoint, of trying to get the internet to places uh, that are more uh, outside of suburbia, outside the cities. And um, you know that's where there's not a lot of hardware options. So where there, and there's also not a lot of congestion. So getting back to the, um, the future of what T-Mobile is going to do here with their gateways, is they've already announced they are releasing uh, plans for new gateway devices and the Netgear Orbi um, mesh system they just came out with it I forget the name of it I'll put it up here um, that one is stated as being compatible with T-Mobile and the main problem with that thing is that it's expensive it's over like a thousand dollars to get this um, this unit so I wouldn't recommend anyone do that but I know that just around the corner here, they are going to be announcing some other boxes that are compatible. And I think their plan is to get rid of this. If you've been with T-Mobile for a while with this 5G, you know they've been doing firmware updates. But there's lots of bugs they've been working out and lots of features that are missing on this versus the, um, 
the kind of OE version of the Nokia Fast Mile. So on the network side of T-Mobile, they are doing some changes. So right now their extended range 5G is a 600 megahertz um, frequency and then their ultra is a 2.5 gigahertz. Now, when they do this uh, carrier aggregation, it's really amongst um, that those two bands there. And you're able to get, like I said, a download increase, but their new plan is doing carrier aggregation on two different 2.5 gigahertz bands. And that will give them a lot more bandwidth. So we're talking about like 100 megahertz of bandwidth capability which is really the full 5G intent and I think this was actually called the Wi-Fi Max uh, several years ago so this is kind of a, a rebranding of that because uh, it never really came to fruition but now that is supposed to be rolling out right now at the end of 2021 and into 2022 um, on their network and then it's going to take software updates on different uh, phones and all the latest Samsung and Apple phones are supposed to support this after they get a software update. So I'll be interested to see what that does. And then I'm assuming that their new gateways that they're coming out with, they're going to be able to support that. So I think a lot more people are gonna to start to see a lot more capability and probably less slow, slowdowns during congestion, as well as uh, better coverage in areas. So I'm pretty excited to see what comes about with that. And if you're already a, a uh, you know subscriber to their service, then you're sticking with it. You should get better service, and you'll get to keep your same price. So uh, stay tuned, and let's see how it goes. If you have any questions, put them down below. If you like the video, obviously hit the thumbs up button, and um, let me know any of your comments uh, about what you've experienced or any questions that you have. Put them down below. I will read them and I'll try to answer them uh, the best I can. So thanks for watching and take care.